welcome space detectives far and wide to another thrilling mystery for Dick Rogers' Space Detective. I am your host, as always, Joanna Hemlock, and I'm joined again by my nerds associate, Eleanor Barkley. Hey. Eleanor, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just tired. I didn't get any sleep last night. I can see that. What happened? I fell down the old YouTube rabbit hole and found out that some madman has made an eight-hour video dissecting some teen sitcom from the 2010s. The one where one of the cast members is now a major celebrity, or the one with legal issues? The first one. And I'm guessing you watched the whole thing? The whole thing. I've spent more brain energy thinking about a show from a decade ago that I never watched than any sane person should. I think I'm a different person now. All this only to find out that it is the second video of a series. Should I go back and watch the other one? I'm too far in it now to go back. Now all I can imagine is the shipping wars that took place over the 2010s. Say one word to me about ship culture and I'll eject you from this podcast. She's serious about that. We are a Zutara household, and I won't hear otherwise. <clears throat> but hopefully today's episode can help keep your mind off things. It's a particularly unique episode, as it is a bit of a mystery unto itself. Do go on. This particular episode of Dick Rogers was never officially produced. Now... I admit a lot of this is secondhand information that we could glean from the person who sent us the script, so eh, take it with a grain of salt, listeners. But the story goes that this story was anonymously written by one of the writers from the 1960s Adam West Batman show. It was originally intended to be an episode of that show, but the script was rejected. The writer was too attached to the concept to let it go, so they rewrote it and pitched it as a Dick Rogers episode. While the script was purchased, it never made it to air and sat in the studio's collection for years. Eventually, it was purchased alongside a collection of other materials in an auction by a private collector, whose family later sent it to us. That's quite the story, but how do we know it's authentic and somebody didn't just send us their fan fiction? There's a production watermark on the script dating 1967 and a messy signature from what I presume is the author, but it's mostly illegible. It is pretty tonally consistent from what I can tell. Yeah, and then it becomes pretty obvious why they rejected it originally, but I don't want to spoil anything. This script must have at least been planned for production, as the commercial breaks have already been inserted. So, we here at Nerds have painstakingly recreated what could have been in today's episode, Dick Rogers and the Case of the Missing Moon. Do you hear that? Listeners all across America, that's right. It's the call to adventure, and to answer that call is our galactic duo, Dick Rogers Space Detective and his loyal sidekick Casper Clemenson, the Space Cadet. There's no mystery too great and no peril too perilous for our brave space heroes. Today, we join our heroic duo as they partake in an exercise of the minds. I see you've mastered memorizing the map of North and South America, but let's see how you fare with Europe. I'm ready, Mr. Rogers. Let me have it. Spain. Right there. France. Easy. Portugal. Ah, uh, tricky, but right there. Andorra. Oh, there's a puzzler. There's so many places that aren't Andorra. But I know it's here, between France and Spain. Some maps are too small to show it properly. Good eye, Space Cadet. You've certainly been keeping up with your studies. Of course. But I have to ask... As fun as these exercises are, is there a real use for something like this? While it's true that most maps are electromechanical nowadays, you never know when you might not have access to one. Perhaps some dastardly villain destroyed the communication satellite and you'll have to find your way with an old-fashioned map. Great geography! You're right, Dick! Though what's even more important is to keep a sharp mind at all times. It's the most important tool a galactic crime fighter like us has at their disposal. Great gazooks! That alarm only means one thing! 
An emergency call from the Commissioner of Space Crimes! Quickly, my friend! Don your helmet! My name and face may be known to the public, but you still have a secret identity to maintain. No sooner had Casper donned his identity-concealing space helmet than the view on their video screen changed to the image of the Space Commissioner! Dick Rogers, Space Cadet, thank goodness you're there! We've got ourselves a real conundrum of a space mystery on our hands. Out with it, Commissioner. Don't make us wait with bated breath. Have you ever heard of the planet Grogan, of the Halicanth star system? I've heard of it, but never seen. The planet is famous for having a moon made entirely of gold. It's a popular tourist spot. That's just it! The golden moon of planet Grogan is gone! Completely missing! Great Scott! Egads! Mr. Rogers, who could have possibly done that? That is what we want you to find out for us. Not only is that moon popular for tourists, it's the centerpiece of the Grogan people's religion. It's safe to say they woke up today and found their god was missing. I see. No doubt the people are distressed. We'll be right there. Our space station is orbiting the planet as we speak. We'll discuss it further when you arrive. As the Commissioner's image disappears, Dick dons his space helmet. Don't you think it's strange that an entire planet would worship something like a moon of gold? It's not our place to judge, chum. Whatever faith a person or alien chooses to practice is none of our business, so long as it does not involve hurting other beings. Like the blood swarm of Carnivus Eleven! Precisely. Their faith led them to attack and devour other planets and all life on them. It was unfortunate, but peaceful resolutions could not be found they had to be confined to their own home world. But we can continue our banter of ideologies on our way to the gift station. Quickly, to the dick rocket! And quickly, as our heroes race to their rocket ship to the stars, let us regale you with a word from one of our sponsors, Pittman Flooring! Hello there, America! Let me ask you something. How often do you have to clean your floors? Once a week? Twice a week? Maintaining a good floor is hard work and can take hours out of your busy day. With the kids, the cooking, and the cleaning, why, I never have time to properly clean the floors. Working 9 to 5 at the office, keeping the car freshly tuned, and bowling league at night never leaves enough time in the day to take care of the floors. Well, no more. With the new Pittman Promise Floor Cleaning Solution, your woes are wiped away. Just add a little bit to your water while mopping, and with just one coat, your floors are guaranteed to stay cleaner, longer than the other leading brand. Wow, that's amazing. It's even scuff resistant. That's right. With Pittman Promise on your floors, scuffs and stains are a thing of the past. And And that's the Pittman Pittman Promise. Promise. Pittman Promise. Find it wherever cleaning supplies are sold. As we return to Dick Rogers' Space Detective, our hero and his sidekick have docked at the GIF space station orbiting the planet Grogan. They're greeted by the Space Commissioner and head of the Space Crimes Division, Officer Zeddy. Thank goodness you're here, Dick. We've been whacking our brains over this caper. Oh, mamma mia. It's been quite a tangle in our spaghetti. I'd expect nothing less. There's no telling which dastardly devil could have performed this criminal caper. Are there any witnesses to the crime? Just one. An early morning newspaper delivery person. We have them here on the station. To the witness! Dick Rogers found himself in a stark interrogation room, seated at a table across from a blue snake-like alien sporting two arms and eight eyes. Greetings. My name is Dick Rogers. Oh, we deal with off-worlders all the time. We understand galactic English. Oh, uh, well, forgive me then. As I said, I'm Dick Rogers, space detective. What do I call you? Clydia, I was making my morning deliveries when I saw the strangest thing. I happened to look up into the sky and saw the moon was smaller than usual, and it just kept shrinking. After a moment, I realized it wasn't shrinking, it was getting further away. Something was physically pulling the moon away from the planet. Great Scott. Whatever could have done this terrible thing? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I think we have everything we need. You're free to go. With the witness released, our heroes convene in the conference room. Now we have to try and narrow down our suspects. Who do we know who could want a moon-sized medal such as this? Really anyone would want a windfall of this with White Dwarf, the Living Sun, the Hero Turned Heel, Supernova, or even that crazy old man, the Moon Miner! Not likely. 
Moon Miner, despite his name, is a prospector old beyond his years. He doesn't have the means for a scandal of this size. That's at least one off the board. Oh, dropped meatballs. That's bad news. What is it, Zenny? Reports from the science team. The Grog and Moon acted as a gravitational counterweight against the pull of the solar system sun. Without it, the planet will start to be pulled towards it, and in just 24 galactic standard hours will be completely engulfed by it. Oh, mamma mia, that's worse than spoiled lasagna. Stellar stratospheres! We've got to work on the double dick! You're right. We can't let this cataclysmic calamity come to pass. We may have a lead after all. I just got a report from across the star system. Satellite imaging pulled a positive on a ship towing something massive behind it. Put it on screen. The computer screen before them showed a grainy black and white photograph of a rocket ship tethered to a large object as it traveled through space. Holy pastoroli! They managed to abscond with a massive object like that with just a single ship? Yes. The mass of that moon would be too great for a single ship like that to be able to pull, even in a zero-gravity environment like space. It's large enough to have its own gravitational pull, as well as the planet Grogan pulling on it. So it should be impossible! It should be, but we're seeing it with our own eyes. There's something else about this rocket that seems off. Dick took the controls of the computer and zoomed in on the grainy photograph. What does this look like to you? A smudge on the lens? A custom paint job! Correct, Space Cadet. Villains are an egotistical lot. They can't stop themselves from customizing their getaway vehicles to show off to their perilous peers. If I'm not mistaken, this particular signature looks like it belongs to none other than the Starlight Siren. This dark-looking smudge here appears to be her initials. S.S. The seductress of scandals! The minx of misdeeds! Greed always was her cardinal sin. No doubt she'd want this avant-garde accolade for herself. And with it, there's no telling what kind of frenzy of felony she'd be able to fund. My God! Mamma mia! But where to find her, Dick? The Starlight Siren's space sanctuary is always on the move. A high-stakes casino built into an asteroid that was converted into a mobile space station. It's never in the same place twice! Commissioner! Was the flight path of this rocket logged with GIF space control? It was not. The registry identifiers and communication signals were also disabled. They were thorough. If it weren't for this stray satellite, we never would have had any clue as to their direction. Can we get a map of the star systems and their projected route? They would have to travel at the sublight speeds if they were towing such a massive object. With that in mind, these five star systems are within the reasonable distance. Now, overlay the previously known locations of the Siren's hideout. The four officers of law enforcement study the star maps. These diligent deputies of decision dedicated their deliberation like no other had done before. Dick, what's this here? Why, that's the Creso star cluster. It's so small that some maps are big enough to show it properly, especially when it's wedged between L6 and L7 star quadrants, <gasps> just like Andorra! Great galaxies, you're right, Space Cadet. And even the name, Chrysos, is Greek for gold. She'd never be able to resist something as on the nose as that. There's no time to waste. You're right, Commissioner. Space Cadet, one Dr. Dick is about to make a house call for justice to the Dick Rocket. Will our brave space heroes corner the Witch of Wickedness before she can complete her criminal come on? Find out this and more after these messages. (coughs) (coughs) I got this thing head cold keeping me up all night. I've got an important meeting in the morning. Well, Skeevy Mike is just the thing for you. Ah, who are you? Why are you in my house? Introducing Skeevy Mike's Industrial Strength Decongestant. This special nighttime blend is guaranteed to knock you right out. (coughs) Oh my god, what is this? Oh, it smells awful. It burns just to breathe around it. The stuff under the sink. You know it's working because it burns. Now here comes the airplane. No, I don't think this is a good idea. Hey, wait, what are you... You hear that? Another satisfied customer. Now I know what you're thinking. Skeevy Mike, where can I get this wonderful product? That's the best part. It's already in your home. Where you least expect to find it. So when a cold has got you up at night, reach for me and I'll be there with Skeevy Mike's Industrial Strength Decongestant. 
And now we return to the ongoing adventures of Dick Rogers, Space Detective. Our heroic duo travel at light speed to the Creso Star Cluster, and true to their hunch, the Starlight Siren's hideaway was just where they expected it. Say, Dick, has that black hole always been there? I don't remember seeing it on the maps. You're right, Space Cadet. I don't remember it either. It's relatively small. It may have formed somewhat recently after those maps were configured. Well, let's get this done quick. I'd hate to be spaghettified by the gravitational pull. I'm sure Officer Zenny would have loved to hear you say that, chum. But fear not. A black hole takes years to expand even a little bit. It'll be hundreds of years for it to grow even an inch or two. That's a relief. Our heroes docked their rocket with the hideout, and the two embarked at the entrance. There's a bouncer, Dick! What should we do? Distract him so we can sneak in, or do we go blasters out? Easy, Space Cadet. Sometimes there are much simpler options. Observe. Name? Dick Rogers, Space Detective. Yeah, you're on the list. What about him? My young ward? He's my plus one. He ain't on the list. Besides, he's way too young to be here. You got ID, kid. Well, well, I'm sure if you let me speak to your boss, I... Space Cadet, I had this handled. Sometimes there are simpler options. Besides, I had it set to stun. I think. (laughs) Let's hurry before someone sees... The duo entered the casino and nightclub that served as the Starlight Siren's home base, sneaking among patrons and partygoers alike. The Siren will likely be on stage at the dance club. I'm going to turn off the audio receptors in my helmet. The Siren's voice has the power to control the minds of men. Luckily, you're too young for her powers to affect you. I'll still be able to read lips, but just in case. Do you remember our Gift Detective Corps hand signals? Of course! Excellent. Now guard yourself, Space Cadet. There's no telling what kind of debauchery we may find here. I'm ready! The two heroes made their way into the dance club where delirious dancers party their lives away. Bodies writhing to the music as a lone woman stands on stage. She is a thing of beauty, though her face remained hidden as she sang to her captive audience. But as Dick Rogers entered the scene, the music stopped. All eyes turned to the intruders. Dick Rogers, you've finally come to me. I'd only dare come to this devil's den in the name of truth and justice. Playing hard to get. That's okay. I like the challenge. Enough small talk, Siren. You know what we're here for? Why, whatever could that be? I've been perfectly innocent. A likely story, you heinous harlot! Dick, do keep your boy on a leash, won't you? I usually don't allow children in here. I'm here about the moon, Siren. The one made of gold that was recently stolen. That priceless artifact? The one belonging to the Grogan people and without which their planet will hurtle into the sun? Never heard of it. I'm not playing games, Siren. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Come closer, Dick Rogers. With a subtle hand signal to Space Cadet, Dick did as the Siren commanded, appearing to be under her spell. The crowd cleared him a path to the stage where he quickly joined the siren standing directly in front of her. Remove your helmet. That's something I just can't do, siren. With a flash, Dick used his famous dick coughs to shackle the starlight siren in the bondage of law. Why you? How? I've been reading your lips the entire time. My helmet's audio receptors have been turned off. And now, siren, you're under arrest. Read this, Rogers. Get them. I don't care what happens to the boy, but I want Rogers alive! Suddenly, a crowd erupted with violence, attacking our brave heroes with the vigor of ten men. But our heroes came prepared. With blasters and fisticuffs, they battled their way through the throng of wrongdoers with great skill and prowess. Hurry, Space Cadet! She's getting away! The two rushed to catch up with their missing malefactor. They're met backstage with the wall of a man. The villain known as the Graviton, the strongest man in the universe. Holy pounds of bricks, Dick! What do we do? There's no time to waste. Step aside, villain, or aid us in catching the siren, and we can promise you a lighter sentence. The Graviton was not there to bargain. He swung at our heroes with fists capable of crushing diamonds to dust! He's under her spell, Dick! What do we do? The Graviton's strength doesn't just come from his muscles. He's actually affecting his own personal gravity, changing his mass. But increased mass come with increased density. The more he improves his strength, the harder it is for him to move. On my signal, switch your blaster to freeze and let him have it. The Graviton came at them again, arms the size of tree trunks. 
threatening to wrench their heads from the shoulders of any man who dared get in his way. Our heroes dodge the danger and position themselves on either side of the graviton. A pincer attack he never saw coming! Now! And simultaneously, the duo set their blasters to freeze and unleashed a two-pronged ray of cold upon the massively muscled man. Cold more bitter than the void of space itself assailed the graviton as he was quickly frozen solid in a block of ice. Will that hold him? Long enough. Let's be off before he breaks out of here. The siren can't be too far. Dick Rogers tracked the starlight siren to the observatory. The view of space outside projected on the walls around them, featuring the black hole outside in plain view. The siren appeared to be heading for a teleporter as a means to escape, but quick shot Dick Rogers blasted the control inside. End of the line, siren. You're cornered and there's no way to escape. Now come peacefully and tell us where you've hidden the moon. Who's escaping? She withdrew an old leather book. I just came to get this. I was hoping to get away from here before using it, but I suppose it doesn't matter now. And what's an old book got to do with this? Holy Azathoth, that's no ordinary book, Dick. That's the Necronomicon. Wait, how do you know that? A good crime fighter is also a scholar in all things. Your words, Dick. I suppose so. And for what reason would you turn to the old magics? How long have we done this, my darling Dick? I've come to realize that no matter how hard I try, you will never be mine. To think of all the capers you and I could have committed, we would have ruled the galaxy. Unfortunately, I'm already married to justice. Yes, of course. With the press of a button, a multitude of hologram drones outside the walls of the observatory deactivated, revealing the golden moon our heroes have been looking for. And then I found this. A lost soul like myself, trapped beyond the veil of reality. But were I to free them, then everything I've ever wanted would be mine. This moon-sized mound of gold is my offering to... The starlight siren began to read from the accursed tomes of trouble, her words inaudible to the human ear, indecipherable to the human mind. The sound raked across the skulls of our heroes like nails on a million chalkboards, Outside, within the black hole, something stirred. Responding to the words of the text of terror, massive hands pulled at the edge of the black hole, widening it, allowing a gigantic hand to reach through, grasping at the moon of gold. The shape and form of this terrible creature from beyond the void, too awful for a man to understand, as Dick Rogers scraped together the will to fight the torturous tone. Reaching for his blasters, he fired a shot, propelling the book from the siren's hand, setting it ablaze. The action provoked a terrible cry that threatened to shatter the minds of those that heard it. The origin of that sound withdrew back into the reality from whence it came. And suddenly, all was silent. No! How could you? I had everything ready. If you'd really sell out this universe for petty pickings or pillage prizes, you'd never understand. It's over, Siren. Never! The Siren slipped to the damaged teleporter, activating the device. Graviton. We're leaving. Siren, you can't. That teleporter is damaged. There's no telling what might happen. Anything that happens is better than rotting away in a prison cell the rest of my life. The floor beneath them shook under the heavy footfalls of the Graviton, who, still under the siren spell, joined her on the teleportation platform. Farewell, Dick Rogers. And in a flash, she and her cohort were gone. The day had been saved, but it was a melancholy victory. The moon was returned to its rightful place in the orbit of the planet Grogon, and there was much rejoicing as Dick Rogers and the Space Cadet returned home to Earth. A job well done. That was one hell of a case, Dick. I'd hardly believe the tale if it came from any other man other than you. Yes, but she got away in the end. I only wish there had been some other way to end this. I don't get what you see in that dame. Maybe you will when you're older. But rehabilitation is the true goal of any crime fighter. Locking people away forever is a waste of a good person. I suppose so. But for now, we can only wait and see if she turns up again. Very true, my friend. Very true. I hope everyone is hungry. I got a batch of my mama's famous ravioli. Boy, am I! Suddenly, that was an earth-shattering kaboom. But as the cinders settled, our heroes could see that the blast hadn't breached the wall of the room, but the very veil of reality itself. 
Then, through this perplexing portal floated a spectral apparition of a 12-foot man wearing judges' robes and holding a titanium hypergavel! Dick Rogers! Great Scott! Holy apparitions! Dick, who is this floating ghost man? By the Council of Time, you have been judged! Guilty! That's right, true spacers! Next week on Dick Rogers Space Detective, our dutiful detective will face the challenge of the Forever Man, man of yesterday, today, and tomorrow! Will he make it out alive? Find out next week, same space time, same space station! Wow. What was that? Right? I'd never have expected it to take a turn for the Eldritch! And that ending! I actually kind of want to know what the whole deal with the Forever Man is. Unfortunately, a sequel script was never penned, so we can only imagine. My brain is too shot to imagine that hard right now. Well, before my co-host passes out, I think it's time we close out the episode. Take it away, Mike! Was that skeevy Mike ad real? Because that doesn't really- Take it away, Mike! (laughs) We're on Facebook at Dick Rogers Pod, on Instagram at Dick Rogers Space Detective, and Twitter at Roger Space. Also on Patreon at patreon.com slash space underscore detective. And make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can join us for your next dick appointment. This episode's nerds are Wendy Wilwert as Joanna, Commissioner, and Husband, Angela Ventress as Eleanor and Forever Man, Michael Storm as Mike Nutley and Ski the Mike. Trent Sanchez as the announcer, Logan Wright as Dick Rogers, Gabe Green as Space Cadet, Nicholas Johnson as Officer Zenny, Pittman Spokesman, and Person, Erica Wilson as Clydia and the Starlight Siren, and Emily Anderson as Housewife and Bouncer. Dick Rogers in the Case of the Missing Moon was written by Logan Wright. Sound design by Michael Storm. Music by Nicholas Johnson. Audio editing by Nicholas Johnson.